Man, it's getting a little chilly. Getting a little chilly on the channel again, dude. I got a little chilly on my shirt. I didn't know how to introduce this one. That's right. Today we're doing another iceberg video. Oh. Strange things in Mario games, otherwise known as Mario oddities. And this is a pretty popular iceberg chart from icebergcharts.com by the user I am a little confused. I was too, trying to decipher everything. No, I'm just I'm just joking. They did a great job. They have links to everything. If you want to see the full list, link will be in the description. There's a lot of entries here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. I've handpicked a few that were pretty interesting to me, and I feel like is interesting to the a broad audience. Uh, there's a lot of things in this list, like small glitches and off-camera secrets that are cool for like a two-minute glance, but don't really make a good entry for a video. I've kind of combed through this list and hand-selected the ones I want to talk about. Also, there are ten layers. I'm, I'm telling you, this is probably the beefiest iceberg I've ever seen. I'm going to be looking at the first three today. I think it's about 20, 25 entries. So let's go ahead and get started. Layer one. Kug. Kug is known as what we call a cut character. He, he was from Super Mario Sunshine. He was supposed to be in the final game, but he was ultimately cut. He's the closest thing we probably have to a Goomba in the Isle Delfino area and its surrounding islands. The Kug file hidden within the game is literally just a 2D thin image of a painted like Goomba creature. The model actually does exist in the game and it's weirdly under the clam ride in Pinna Park. If you're hacking in the game and you can get Mario to actually interact with the Kug under Pinna Park, it'll shock him for some weird reason. There's a thing in Super Mario Sunshine called pollution maps and those exist within the game code and they basically act as maps to help map out the goop in the game because there's a lot of it. In these pollution maps, certain images can be seen for certain levels. Uh, there's one even of Kug himself. It's a low rendered image of just Kug's outline on a black background. There's even this disturbing Jeff the Killer looking ass thing in the fucking pollution map for an early Bihongo. Bihongo, dude. There's even this disturbing Jeff the Killer looking ass thing in the fucking pollution map for an early Bianco Hills build. Like, what is this thing, dude? Anyway, it's a real shame Cog never made it into the final game. Because I really wanted the Chinese water torture him with Flood. <laughs> this is so stupid. I don't know. Whatever. Cut it if it doesn't work. Hell Valley Sky Trees. In the Shiverburn Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, you can find something particularly disturbing peering in the skybox. A couple of shadowy figures can be seen high up above the player in Shiverburn Galaxy, and they don't move, they just kind of peer back at Mario. In the game files, players have found that these characters are denoted as trees, and this leads many to believe that these represent a mythical creature in Japanese culture uh, known as Kodama. They're said to live in forests and curse those who attempt to cut them down. And honestly, considering the trees in Shiverburn Galaxy are the only trees left, uh, we can assume they're looking for somebody to curse. And you know, Mario's just sitting right down there, ready to be cursed by a couple trees. Uh, the file name is even more eerie, and specifically it's named Hell Valley Sky Trees. And we can only assume the Hell Valley Sky is the course name denotion in the title. Having the name Hell in your course title, even if it is a code name, it's still pretty disturbing. Like, why does it have to be this level in particular, with all these wandering souls in it? Yeah, dude. I think we're in the ninth layer of hell, Mario's hell. Flood's Reflection. In Mario Sunshine, Mario himself is pretty fucking useless. He's kind of just thrown up against this full army onslaught of sewer shit water. And that's kind of why this character Flood exists. Listen, I have an Alex Jones-esque theory that Flood is actually a vampire. And my main running theory is that you can't actually see his face in the reflections in the water in the game. And it doesn't matter what nozzle type you have. Flood's reflection will always be headless. This is actually likely due to Flood's head being a different entity in the game from Mario and his body, but it, I really do like to believe Flood craves the Blood Moon and only wants to kill, to feast on those who, who, who he's killed. You know, vampire shit, Jesus Christ. Plus, this game actually reveals that Egad from Luigi's Mansion made Flood, and we all know he's up to fun, some fucking sketchy shit, dude. Mystery Goomba. In the first Bowser level in Super Mario 64, there are seven Goombas you run across throughout the level. Ugh. If you check the game code, there are actually eight Goombas that show up in the level, but one of them is set to spawn off a ledge near two other Goombas, and because of his spawn point, he actually immediately spawns at the base floor of the map, 
for a frame then disappears forever. This actually also makes the coin that the mysterious Goomba drops impossible to collect. In the remake of the game for DS, the Goomba was removed entirely and there are only seven that spawn in the level. I mean, come on, dude. This poor Goomba never stood a chance, man. And I'm starting to believe this Goomba was put here on purpose by none other than Miyamoto himself. He purposely made the Goomba spawn out of bounds to fulfill some sick fantasy. Perhaps the Goomba even represents one of Miyamoto's victims. Layer 2 Please walk quietly in the hallway. Listen, there are a lot of signs throughout the castle of Super Mario 64, and a lot of them actually offer great advice to the player. The, this game was the first of its kind when it came out, so these signs were actually very helpful to help people master the game's controls. Although there are a few in the castle that kind of leave uh, a desire for more information. One of the signs in the upper staircase of the castle reads, Shh, please walk quietly in the hallway. In the remake, the DS version, it is actually a toad that exclaims to Wario he shouldn't shuffle loudly through the halls, but that still doesn't really explain why you wouldn't want to be noisy in the, this particular hallway. This is most likely referencing the classy way Princess Peach lives, and she wouldn't want a bunch of Italians doing somersaults in her hallways, but the bluntness of shushing someone through a fucking sign is something else, man. Listen, if she wants me to pipe down, she can come stop me herself. Oh yeah, that's right, she's a piece of stained glass. 4-4 Ghost The entities we discussed before in Mario Galaxy 2 actually made another appearance in the Mario series, or so some people believe. In Mario 3D Land for Nintendo 3DS, if you go to the end of the level of 4-4 and wait a while near the flagpole, a strange ghostly figure will show up and start staring past Mario directly at the player. And after a while, it just fades away. This ghost has come to be known as the 4-4 ghost because this is the spot it's easiest to actually see. But technically, the ghost can appear in the end of any ghost house level in the game, thanks to some shared assets. Not only that, but it technically appears at the beginning of some ghost house levels. If you want a more in-depth look, I highly suggest watching the Swanky Box video on this. Uh, he goes into much more details about where you can see it in the beginning. Uh, yeah, I'm being lazy about this entry, but I still wanted to include it because it's creepy. It's the only human looking ghost in the game. That's not a boo. That's a, that's a dead human. Impossible spinning coin. Luigi's Mansion might as well be Monopoly in terms of its goal. Like, yeah, you gotta have to fucking save Mario, and you're gonna have to stop King Boo, and you have to stop Bowser. But what we're all really there for was collecting all that sweet cash money, dude. Nothing is more satisfying in a video game than collecting cold hard bills, cash, and gold bars. Throughout your adventure, you actually collect a shit ton of money. Enough to buy a PS5 at least. There is a coin in the game that even the greediest of greedy players won't be able to get. It is known as the impossible spinning coin. The coin can appear out of bounds in every single room in the mansion, and many believe that the coin was used as a placehold coin counter for an early E3 build. It is thought that the coin is also used to set some attributes for every other coin in the game since they have some interesting collision. Even if it was possible and you were able to pull off a triple backward vacuum flip out of bounds and get to the coin, it has no detection or collision with Luigi, meaning the secret truly is impossible to obtain. Ninji's missing in the credits. Listen, credits in games have always been a trudge to get through. I think uh, same could be said for movies. Most are just uninteresting screenshots of the game we just played, while a million names you can't pronounce fly by. However, I think when developers take the extra mile with their credit, it kind of really shows. I think Super Mario World still has one of the best credit sequences, and while it definitely wasn't the most original idea, a cast call at the end of the game is pretty much always a classy, classy way to wrap up a platformer. I mean, Donkey Kong Country even did this, and I'd say it did it way better. But we're talking about Mario World here, so I digress. Throughout the credits, it will show the names and pictures of all the enemies in the game. Some of them you run into countless times, and a few that make you question if they were even actually in the game. However, there is one enemy in the game that everyone will run into at some point that does not make it into the final credits. That character is Ninji. Ninji appears at the very end of the game, right before you fight the final Bowser. He literally can't be unseen. Yet this fucking Bam Margera looking bullet bill gets a fucking spot in the credits. Even though it only appeared on one fucking level. This is especially troubling seeing as Nintendo has brought back Ninji in numerous games since. Like Mario Golf Super Rush and Super Mario Maker 2. Yeah, I don't see fucking Torpedo Ted Cruz anywhere, so what gives Nintendo? Give credit where credit's due, dude. Over the flagpole. Over the hedge. Shout out. 
Super Mario Bros. is an iconic game, but I don't think I'm alone in saying I'm not going back to this game on a Saturday night. It's a great game, and it definitely has its diehard fans, but I'd much rather play a Mario 3 or a, a, a World for my pl Mario platformer of choice. This game has been picked apart over the years. I mean, you got things like speedrunning tricks, speedrunning exploits, weird glitches, all of the sort. You could get endless one-ups, and there was even a deeper rumor that said you could actually jump over the flagpole. If you did a few precise jumps in certain levels, you could access a secret area behind the flagpole. But no way, right? This was nothing more than playground chit-chat in the 80s, right? Wrong. This isn't fucking ill as real, alright? If you clear it and make it to the other side, you will be met with a blank, endless level. And yet, this is still more fun than most of the shit you see in Mario Maker 2. It is seemingly an endless hallway of level, but if you use an endless time mode, you can reach a point in which the game starts to glitch, and the blocks will glitch into each other, and it's just it's a fucking mess. This is when Mario truly reached the end of his simulation and woke up in his Matrix bath. Killing Birdo with a key. Listen, if you never clutch your keys walking down a sketchy street at night like a great value Wolverine, I'd say you haven't really lived. But how much damage can a bunch of jumbled keys shoved through some greasy fingers really do to somebody? Well, apparently a lot if you're in the Mario universe. In Super Mario Bros. 2, the American one, there's a few ways you can dispatch of enemies. You can toss shit at them, you can toss them themselves, or you can just blow them up. For bosses specifically, most of the time you're going to be throwing shit at them, especially the sub-boss known as Birdo. Throughout the game you run into quite a few of these creatures and usually you have to throw its own eggs back at it. That's right, it shoots its own eggs at the player and you just gotta toss them back like a bad Halloween if you're the one getting egged. <laughs> However, in level 1-2, the player can take the key with them from earlier in the level and kick Birdo's ass with it. Yeah, take that, you bitch. After three hits, Birdo faints and the player wins. But they still have to deal with that creepy-ass mask dude that shows up whenever you take his key. Well, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if it's worth it. I, I'd rather throw fucking Birdo's unborn children back at her than stare at this soulless dude. Wide Toad. We haven't seen a lot of content that was dug up through game files thus far, but this next entry is something that surely threw data miners for a fucking loop. In Paper Mario, the Origami King, there is an eerie sprite of Toad which depicts him having a huge head atop a small body. I mean, out of context, this is actually kind of fucking disturbing. I don't know if it's just his blank expression, but it screams that he just wants out of this fucking elephant man of a Toad. In reality, this is just a graphic that is in the game, but can't be seen in full. Uh, if the player looks through a telescope on Overlook Tower, they can see an obscured view of just Toad's big ass dome, as if he's standing right in the way of the telescope. The developers decided to fully design Toad with a body, and this is what the sprite looks like unobscured by the telescope. It's a funny design overall, but one that really weirds me out when it's seen on its own. I don't know man, I feel like I'm gonna wake up, go in my kitchen, why Toad's just gonna be getting something out of my fridge without my permission. You ever walk into your kitchen and wide toads drinking your milk? Skipping Yoshi Valley. It's inevitable. Every game will eventually get a speedrunning following, and most of the time it means the game will be broken in every which way to see its fastest routes. This, of course, includes racing games and everyone's favorite kart racer, Mario Kart. All the Mario Kart games have crazy skips within their courses, but today we will be looking at one of the most iconic skips, and that is in Mario Kart 64. In the stage Yoshi Valley, you can use a technique in which you boost with a mushroom over a fence. If you hit the fence just right, it will trigger a lackey to put you back over the finish line, and it will count as if you've driven a full lap. The dynamics of how that works is probably much more complicated than I just explained, but that's the basis of the glitch. Considering Yoshi Valley is just a confusing jumbled mess of a level, I think I'd prefer to use the skip so I don't have to play this stupid ass course. If you're trying to pull this glitch off, I recommend using time trials mode to practice since you get uh, a few mushrooms there. Bridge climbing and bomb on battlefield. Mario 64 is another one of those games that have been destroyed in terms of uncovering weird shit. Weird things like Ghost Wario flying at you down a hallway is the hot shit right now, but I want to talk to you about a weird phenomena that has always been in the game. In the stage bomb on battlefield, you will run across this bridge. It's pretty inevitable that you will cross over the bridge, but Intuitive players may notice a bundle of coins underneath. Once under the bridge, Mario's spider senses kick in, and now you can hang from the underside of the fucking bridge. 
See, much like Tobey Maguire growing those little gross spider hands out of his fingers in that movie, Mario has small sticky spider hands coming from his glove. Listen, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but this is a little weird how Mario can just hang underneath this specific bridge, but none of the other ones in the game. He can hang from other objects in the game like grates, but never a bridge. This is likely to just due to early testing mechanics in the game, and this was just overlooked upon the final release. But honestly, I kind of like my Spider Mario theory better. Layer 3. Ball Ghost. Luigi's Mansion has a lot of creepy secrets hidden behind the scenes. Uh, if you want to see my first ever iceberg video, and a pretty ill-informed one at that, I made a Luigi's Mansion iceberg where I delve into more weird things to do with that specific game. Regardless, I wanted to point out something from Luigi's Mansion that always kind of intrigued me. This small little dude right here can be found in the game technically, but is never seen or usable in the game. It shows up named Star, but in the original build it was known as Ball. The character is shown as a blue ball ghost type character, and was actually seen in E3 footage for the game. This character was most likely going to play a bigger part in the game due to the fact it actually has a few animation sets, unlike some other entities found in the game files. This character looks like it might have acted like Boo Balls, likely these were to be used as a weapon if Luigi could shoot, but they were ultimately cut. Playable EGADS Lab Speaking of Luigi's Mansion, let's go ahead and hit on something that I didn't really delve nearly enough into from my other video. Uh, Explorable Lab, I couldn't find anything official on this or even any beta stuff on this, but in the game files there are models for EGAD's lab that appeared to be playable at some point. Of course further than what we have now, which is just talking to EGAD and the lab kind of acting as a hub of sorts. These files are actually maps that were to be used with the Game Boy Horror. The Game Boy Horror in the game features a small map system of the entire mansion, and it appears EGAD's lab would have been part of that. This was likely cut due to time constraints or replaced by the picture gallery, which Luigi can actually walk around in. Whatever the case, I think it would have been cool to mess around in EGAD's lab. Listen, I bet he has some fucked up experiments in there. I'm just gonna say it. I think EGAD is uh, responsible for uh, the COVID. I think it came from his lab. Iggy's hair. I honestly think the introduction of the Koopa Kids was a huge deal for the Mario series. I feel like it really carved out unique worlds and bosses for levels you were playing through in Mario games, rather than just get to the end of the level and the next one will look just the same. Each of the Koopa Kids are distinct enough from one another. Ever since they were introduced in Mario 3, they've been used in many different ways, but it it's usually Mario fighting these motherfuckers on a 2D plane, let's be honest. While I feel the Koopa Kids in Mario 3 were unique, I think they were really shined in Super Mario World. Most of the boss battles felt different from one another and they all were kinda themed differently. However, some of the Koopa Kids shared way too much from one another. Take Iggy for example. In the game he can be seen with slicked back white hair, but in the credits he can be seen with hair that kinda sticks forward. This is because the title of Iggy Sprite shares the same source as Larry. So what we have here is Iggy straight up Jack Larry style. Larry! Not only is Iggy's hair corrected in the credits of the game, but they also went the extra mile and corrected a 20 year old mistake when Iggy reappeared in Mario Maker 2. In the Super Mario World theme, where he can be seen with his forward-facing hair. Man, catch me going into the fucking cost cutters and asking for the Iggy next time, dude. I want my fucking hair shooting forward like that. World Zero. The Super Mario Advance games are really awesome remakes of the old Super Nintendo classics, and they're sometimes my favorite ways to play some of these older games. These games would feature from the ground up remakes of the original game and adapted them for a more portable experience. Along with the remake, the games featured cool additions like little mini games and, and some changes from the original game. One of these changes was featured in Super Mario Advance 3, the remake of Yoshi's Island on Super Nintendo. The game featured a mysterious World Zero, which most players would never actually naturally see in a playthrough. You'd actually have to be exceptionally bad at the game to see this weird world counter. If you get a game over in the tutorial level, the game will save your progress, but since you haven't actually made any progress, the main menu will say World Zero. This was actually added to the remake and was not featured in the original Yoshi's Island, as the player was given infinite lives on the tutorial level, making it impossible to get a game over. Pretty interesting little secret in the game if somebody was bad enough to see it. Isle Delfino on the map. Super Mario Odyssey was probably my favorite game of 2017 and it still stands as a solid 3D Mario platformer. 
listen, the game had a lot of content upon release, but I'm really not alone in saying I wanted more from this game and this universe overall. And for a while, it almost appeared that Nintendo was planning for at least a future DLC for the game. Early versions of the globe that Mario throws his hat on had a spot for Al Delfino also, but it was cut from the final game and only exists in pre-release content. However, if you zoom in real close, you can still see a small bump as to where Isle Delfino would have been. Given that it's been almost five years since the game's release, I've at least given up on Sunshine DLC for Odyssey. Even with all the teasing Nintendo does, best case now is Mario Odyssey 2, I think. They are sure taking their time with that. You're just gonna leave Mario stagnant for five years? What is he, Grand Theft? All of a sudden? You can't make a little red man go jump? Hostile Dory. Listen, I was, I was, I was talking some giving us mad praise to the signs in Mario 64 earlier. But the signs that are present in Hazy Maze Cave would present Dory, you know, the giant sea creature in the level, as a dangerous being and one that would actually eat Mario for his lunch. The sign warns you that you shouldn't become the beast's lunch and warns players to stay away. However, if players look in the manual for the game, they can actually see that this was a cover-up and that Dory is actually friendly and integral to getting around this part of the level. That it hasn't stopped theorists from running rampant with the signs in the game and now consider Dory to have a violent past for there uh, to be warning signs for it. Listen man, people have dog warning signs for a reason, just saying. I honestly think the first theory is more likely that Bowser tried to throw Mario off with the signs and painted Dory to be something she's not. But I could see running across this as a kid and getting scared and not referring to manual because who the fuck read in the 90s? Flowers in Lethal Lava Land. In Super Mario 64, you can see small environmental effects sometimes. It can be lava bubbling or bubbles from jumping in the water. Mario 64 has quite a few of these environmental effects. One of the effects went unused and is of a little dancing flower. The flower seems to be pretty joyous and just has a small animation of it dancing back and forth. The flower's files are located near and around a lot of the Lethal Lava Land files for some reason and many assume this was cut from the level itself, but it's more likely it was just an asset that was to be used throughout the game. It's unknown if this was truly to be used as an environmental effect, or if it was possibly going to be used as an item, like a fire flower or something. I really enjoy the different power-ups Mario 64 has, but I often wonder what the game would be like if it had more traditional Mario items, like the fire flower. Extra Ball and Ball Pit Listen, I know I've covered a lot of Mario 64 in this video, but it's such a, it's such a eerie game. It's also my favorite game ever made, so I'm going to talk about it a lot. Arguably, Mario 64's most iconic boss is King bomb -Om. He is the first boss many players encounter in their playthrough, and he is such a unique boss fight. After figuring out you just have to break homies back a few times, you will defeat him after three whacks. After he bitches a little bit, he explodes and you get a fucking star. It is likely you will return back into the level after this battle since this is the first star in the level. And upon returning to the mountain, you may notice there are three balls rolling in the pit now. King bomb -Om is the third ball. If you remember back to when you were scaling the mountain before you killed King bomb -Om, there was only two balls in the pit. His fate is sealed to always roll around in this stupid pit. I, I think he honestly deserves it though. He thought he could just stand on that hill not bothering anyone and doing anything? Nah, fuck that guy. Nah, not without Mario and his legion of vigilance breaking the backs of all who support the fucking king. It's a real modern day American revolution, dude. That was the iceberg, part one. If you wanna see more, leave a like, let me know in the comments. I will probably move on to a different topic unless uh, this gets a lot of uh, likes and stuff, then I will do a part two. Uh, it's all up to engagement and everything. Uh, I find this stuff interesting, but I always wanna you know, appeal to a broader audience, so uh, for now, we will leave Mario Oddities at that, but again, if you guys want to see part two, there are ten layers to this iceberg, so there's a lot more content I could pull from. Anyway, if you guys liked the video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and hopefully I'll do more in the near future. It seems to be a monthly thing I do. <laughs>